Hello there, welcome to Buckles on Batman, the sporadic YouTube show where I talk about, where Buckles talks about Batman. Today, I'm giving it a bit of joker. There's some bat news. Um, yeah, what's happening? Well, Jared Leto's getting a second bite of the joker cherry, isn't he? Hey, another go, another little shot at the title. Um, another little kind of attempt at, get, at nailing the character that he so criminally failed to nail when he had his first chance. Um, and we just got the first look of it. Bas long story short, I'm sure you're up on this, but if you're not, Zack Snyder is releasing a director's cut of Justice League, which was the uh, the disastrous attempt at bringing the Justice League to the screen a couple of years ago. That, um, in fairness, was not his vision. He had an idea for where that film was going to go. Personal circumstances meant he had to withdraw. Another man finished the work. The result was not good. And uh, the film flopped, quite rightly. And uh, they're going to release a director's cut on HBO Max. A big four-hour epic affair. And uh, there's going to be more... More footage added. He's doing a lot of things. We've seen a trailer already. And in the trailer, we've already seen that he's reimagined the look and the attitude of Stefan Wolf, the main villain of the piece. We're going to see Darkseed, which was completely cut. Who's the real, the real big bad. And they were going to set him up for sequels. And he doesn't appear in the, the version that was released. But he's going, to, he's going to appear in this version. Different take on the resurrection of Superman. We're going to see the black Superman suit. Other stuff that, you know, we haven't seen. <laughs> Hence unseen footage. And we're going to get a cameo appearance by the Joker. The Jared Leto, Leto Joker is going to get a scene in this. No one knows the context yet. I, am, I, uh, I imagine it's either going to be a dream sequence or a flashback. I don't think he's literally going to show up as part of the plot. Though he might. He might. So Leto's getting another shot. Now, Leto's Joker is pretty much regarded by the fans... And certainly by this one, as the worst cinematic take on that character. I, it, it's If you're a fan of the Bat universe, the Batverse, if you follow all the different aspects of it, and if uh, there's, every generation seems to get its Joker, and several actors have brought him to the screen. And the constant debate with you know Bat fans and my mates is who's the best, and. My answer to that is always, if I had to choose, I, I, there is one I would choose if I absolutely had to. But every Joker I've seen has been the perfect Joker for their time and their place, their set and setting. Cesar Romero's Joker is the perfect Joker for the Batman, the 1960s comedy series. He plays it to per He is the clown prince of crime. <laughs> He is the crown prince of crime. You know, he is this light, buoyant figure. Um, I often, one of my favourite little musings I have with my brother is what would have happened if they'd switched the casting on the Joker and the Riddler. Because Frank Gorshin's Riddler, I think, is more like the Joker than Cesar Romero's Joker. And I also think that Frank Gorshin's Joker would have been terrifying because his Riddler was scary enough as a kid. So I think his joke of that manic laugh and that energy and the, and the build of him, the shape of him, his ability with voices and the energy he brought to the Riddler, I think would have made a perfect Joker. But he's also a perfect Riddler. I'm not going to knock that at all. And I think Cesar Romero's Joker is great. It often makes me laugh, though, in that series when the Joker is the one in the, in the, the episodes where they meet and the Batman 66 film. Um, the joke was the one saying to the Riddler, calm down, Riddler. I mean, he's trying to calm him down. Peace, friends. The joke is the one that breaks up the fights between the Penguin and the Riddler. Anyway, Nicholson's Joker, perfect for Batman 89. That The perfect actor in the perfect... I can't think anyone that would have done a better job in that film, with the possible exception of Robin Williams, who was originally cast, in fact. I'm going to do a special video on the Jokers that never were, the ones that were nearly cast and weren't, so look out for that. Ledger's Joker, perfect, perfect for The Dark Knight. You know, Nicholson's Joker wouldn't work in that film, but nor would Ledger's Joker work in Batman 89. They're all perfect for their set and setting, for their milieu, for their, for their time, their place. And then they announced that the Joker is going to return, but not in a Batman film, in Suicide Squad, the movie of Suicide Squad, James Gunn's film from... Uh, 
whenever it was, five years ago now, six years ago, the Joker will be in this film. And I assumed, like a lot of Bat fans, the Joker would be the big bad. He would be the villain. He would be the thing that the Suicide Squad go up against, which is what he's been in the comic books. I thought we were going to get a gritty film there, like a gritty urban-based story on the streets of Gotham. You know, that the, the, the as, it, as it is in the comic books, that the Suicide Squad were going to go into... Arkham was going to be overrun, and the Suicide Squad were going to go in on a mission to get something, and the Joker would be in Arkham as their main protagonist. As opposed to what we got, which is more some bizarre cosmic saving... Apparently some cosmic being's going to destroy the city by channeling demons and God knows what, and it's a, a, a cataclysm on the level of, you know... The coming of Dark Side, Dark Seed, and and um, Harley Quinn can stop this with a baseball bat because she's Harley. I mean, madness. Anyway, a, a video for another time. What I think of the Suicide Squad. We're talking about Leto's Joker's new look this afternoon. So they can't. At the time, they're casting the Joker, and as always, when this happens, every actor with a bit of a quirk is getting mentioned. Johnny Depp's going to be the Joker, you know. Um, there was talk of, uh, what's his name? I like him. Played Indiana Jones' son. LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf. All great actors. And finally, Jared Leto, the Oscar-winning Jared Leto's name arises. And I was quite content with this. I think, right, he's got the right look for the piece. He's quirky. I love his work. I like him. I like his lifestyle. I like that he's 75 and looks 28. I like that he does 19 hours of yoga every day. I like that. I like him. I like that he's a bit mad. And I thought perfect casting, perfect visual, perfect casting. In my head, we're inventing the makeup he was going to wear, etc., etc. Comes the hour of the release of the film. And that iteration of the Joker, for me personally, and I believe I'm not alone in this, your taste may vary. I'm not looking for a row, and I'm certainly not looking for a thumbs down. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it from the second I saw it. They released the look of him, the makeup. I just, just did not do it for me. Too much. Uh, he, he's dripping in tattoos. I, I can't imagine the Joker, this symbol of chaos. What's he going to do next? He doesn't even know himself. And would not sit in a tattoo chair for, for eight hours and multiple visits. Uh, who's doing these? These weren't jailhouse tats. These were beautifully thought out designer tattoos. I, I, so now I've got this image of my, that's what, what the Joker just sat there did he, for like nine hours like you know zzz, zzz, zzz. how are you then zzz. busy is it yeah yeah zzz. how many weeks to, before the next sit zzz. you know and he had damaged written on his forehead now that to me was the, the death knell because uh, no too much damaged I mean you know Ledger's Joker was all, you know, uh, was all unspoken. It was, he smeared his face with white. He had the scars. He never knew where he got them. It was implied he might have done it himself. You know, he was, it was all internal. He never knew what he was thinking, what he was going to do. You know, this, this, it's like, show, don't tell. You know, Letters Joker was all tell, don't show. I mean, like, he's got damage li written on his forehead, literally. Like the bleached white skin and the green air weren't enough. I, I got the idea behind the metal teeth. He's got metal teeth. And I got the idea behind that. If you're a, if you've had a, several kick-ins off Batman, it's likely you've had them knocked out your head. And uh, so I get that. I didn't like it, but I get it. I didn't like the way he dressed. It was too considered. It was designer gear. This was the Joker as Scarface. It was... Big rings, jewellery. The Joker doesn't choose jewellery, you know. It was designer jackets, coats, got, uh, lots of gold and uh, just a pimp. A pimp Joker, a too organised Joker. The, the gang was too organised. The, the gang was... He was Scarface. And, the, and the, the Empire was too well constructed. He drove a beautiful designer sports car. And the relationship with Harley was off. That that relationship didn't work for me, that they were both in love with each other. It should be that she's in love with him and he doesn't give a toss. Um, yeah, so I didn't care for the, for the performance. 
I didn't care for how the Joker was used because he's barely in the film, and when he is, it it's, adds nothing to the plot. He wasn't the big bad. He was a background figure. He wasn't manipulating the action. He just wanted his girlfriend back. It was not well done. He was, his presence was a detriment to that story, and that story didn't need anything else to bring it down because it was pretty awful as it stood. But we never saw this Joker go up against Affleck's Batman. This is the Joker that is the opposite to Affleck's Batman. We haven't seen them on screen together, uh, apart from a very brief sequence when he's, the Batman's on the roof of his car. But even then, there's no interaction. It's literally just Batman lands on the roof of his car and then it, the car goes into the river. Um, we've, not, we've not seen them have a confrontation. And after Suicide Squad, nor did I want to. And then, so, Leto's performance was uh, rightly derided. It was awful. Um, he, his behaviour on the set has been well documented. Uh, I wasn't there. I can't speak to that. It sounds embarrassing, but I wasn't present to it. Obviously, not being a film star. Um, yeah, too many ums. I've got to get better at that. I'm trying to do these videos as like a free form, free flow thing. But seriously, this one, there'll be some editing. So... So, Joker happens, the Joker film, a few years later. Now, this is the other thing. So, like, Heath Ledger got cast as the Joker. And when I saw that, my first reaction was, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. This is this, this, a beautiful man like this playing the Joker. I wanted a comedian. I wanted Steve Carroll, who was also in the frame. Oh, look out for my video coming soon on the Jokers that never were. And then, obviously, Ledger just blew me off. When I saw it, it was like, that's incredible. I was wrong. I put my hands up. That's the, one of the greatest things I've ever seen on a screen. One of the most charismatic performances in history. Whereas Leto was, I'm up for this. That's perfect casting. And when I saw it, that is a disaster. That is the least charismatic performance in history. And then Todd Phillips' Joker happens. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. And there you go. What can I say about that? That... To quote my brother in the cinema at the end, that's the that last half hour of that film. That is the Joker that I wanted to see on screen my entire life. That is the Joker. You, that you, there's a whole video to be made about that film. I won't diminish it by trying to encapsulate my feelings of it in a few seconds in a video about something else. Which is the new look of Jared Leto. Because Joaquin Phoenix wins the Oscar and he wins the crowd and he wins... Uh, deservedly so, and he's an you know, and is humble and, and is just uh, wonderful. I love his work. <sighs> and I thought that was Leto done with the Joker because he's not in the there's a suicide, there was the Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey film, he wasn't in that, and he was pretty much dashed off in the opening as a character, even. Uh, he doesn't appear in the new Suicide Squad movie, but then. Word gets out. He's appearing in the, the, the Zack Snyder cut of the Justice League in some capacity, in one or two scenes. We don't know the context, what these scenes are going to be. And he's coming with a new look. They're redesigning his look. And that's what we're going to have a quick look at on this video. Um, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at Jared Leto's new look. Now, I haven't seen it yet either. I've, I've saved this. I've had, a, I've had a glance at it to save the picture, but I've not actually looked at it properly. So this is going to be the first time that I get to actually look at this thing properly. Right, and there it is. Now, my first thoughts on that, right. Straight away, that gives me a clue as to how he's going to appear in the film. That looks to me like he's... Well, well that looks to me like he's in Arkham. That looks like... He looks like the Joker from... Um, the Batman, that animated cartoon series from 2005, 2004. The not so good Batman animated series when the Joker had that, well, basically this look, that hair, and he wore a straight jacket and stripy trousers and he was barefoot and all odd and it didn't work for, not as a, as a visual. Excuse me, I've got a bit of uh, acid. I'm going to get some water and I'll carry on with the video. Yeah, it was the, anim the animated series from 2004 that I didn't particularly like. Um... I'm guessing from this picture, that looks to me like... So this looks to me like he's going to appear in Arkham Asylum. The way they've just... Just from this picture, he looks like he's wearing... He's not wearing clothes. That looks like hospital... A hospital gown of some description. So that gives me a little clue that he's going to appear in a, a flashback. Or maybe Batman's going to go... And, or Bruce Wayne's going to go and see him in Arkham. 
Maybe it's that, a bit of a Hannibal Lecter moment. He goes in and sees him. I don't know, this is all speculation. This video is going to come back to haunt me in a few weeks when that comes out. Um, they've grown his hair out. He's got long hair now, long lanky hair. That looks to me like a reaction to the Joaquin Phoenix Heath Ledger Jokers. They both had long hair. And Lero, Leto's, hair, Leto's hair in uh, Suicide Squad was quite, was quite short. So um, it looks to me like, oh yeah, successful Jokers, that's the key. Long hair. Make him look like the crow. <laughs> Give him a lovely barnet. That'll set it off. Oscar bait. It's like Samson with his hair. Samson gets his hit strength from his hair. Joker actors get their Oscars from theirs. They've really got a bit ledger on him, haven't they, actually, looking at this? that The red mouth is... Uh... Yeah, the original Leto mouth was quite studied. It looked like if there was any lipstick at all, it was quite, quite subtly applied. This is a big red smear across his mouth. That's definitely a... A Ledger influence there. They're trying to make, they really are trying to make him look like Ledger's Joker, actually, I think, facially. That looks, without the scars, that would be too much. Here's an interesting factoid for you, by the way. The original shooting script of uh, Todd Phillips' Joker, the end. Um, spoilers if you haven't seen it. On the car, when he stands up on the car. And in the film, he does the blood smile. Here's a moment where he has this, this brief moment of seeing his own blood and then he that does the blood smile, smears it across his face to, and, you know, and turns to face the crowd. Wonderful moment. So many moments in that film. That film will get its own episode. And the Ledger joke, the, the original ending was that he got up off the boot of the car. There was a piece of broken glass. He was going to bend over, pick it up. And then he was going to, half his face was going to be cut by the car accident. And he was going to pick up a piece of broken glass and cut the other half. And then end with the smile like that. And uh, the decision was made, I think, by either Phillips or Phoenix. I'm not sure which one of them made the decision, but to, to bin that off, because that was making the statement that this was the Heath Ledger's Joker. This is this is how he began. And this is not the Heath Ledger Joker. This is a Joker that exists in another conceptual universe, part of the multiverse, if you will. But there's a little fascinating fact for you. But this is like as close as you can get to the Ledger Joker facially without the scars. You know, it's, it's the white face. And that's the other thing about uh, Leto's Joker has actual white skin. It's not makeup. He's been bleached in the, the chemicals. Um, don't quite see his origin story in Suicide Squad, but it, he takes Harley Quinn to the place where it happened and it's a chemical plant and, and she does the same process and it bleaches her skin. So his... His skin is certainly bleached. I'm not sure if the hair is dyed or if that's just the way his hair went after this process. But whereas like Nicholson's Joker is absolutely, he fell in acid and that's his face. It's not makeup. He's got that Richter smile and the makeup, and what, and what have you. So it looks grunge. It does look grunge. They got, they've grunged him up. It's, it's less studied than he used to be. Like the hair is a mess. The makeup is a mess. He looks like he's wearing a hospital gown. He's not wearing designer gear. But that's circumstantial, not choice. But um, they've definitely grunged him up. Um, I like it. It looks fine. It, it, the only thing that's wrong with it is it's still Jared Leto. Again, no disrespect to him. Fine, fine actor. But I'll be keen to see what his Joker is in a different director's hands. There's always talk about the director's cut of Suicide Squad knocking about with a lot of different Joker stuff that ended up on the cutting room floor. I'm not sure if that's going to save the character if that ever comes out, because I don't it's the character that's wrong. It's that look, it's the jewellery, it's the styling, it's the posing. The, the, the Leto's Joker is self-aware. He knows how he looks. He's trying to create effects. Whereas the other Jokers, the effective ones, don't give a monkey's alley look and aren't trying to do anything. Things are just happening. You know, they're just that, that they are. They are that. They are not even a human being. They're a vibe. Leto's Joker is an evil man. The other Jokers, Ledger and, and particularly Phoenix, are just a vibe. They're a happening. They're a, a nervous system unleashed. They're, they are what they are and they don't care what they look like particularly. Whereas Leto's Joker clearly has vanity. The Joker should never be vain. Should be, you know, he should never be vain. In my uh, opinion. But it'll be, it'll be interesting to see this Joker actually have a scene with Batman to see what Affleck and Leto, if they, if they share the screen, which I hope they do, at least once, just for completeness. It would be nice. I know that Affleck is pretty much done with the Batman role, and um, 
I don't see how Leto's Joker comes back unless he smashes it out of the park with this. And uh, But for the sake of completeness, I would like to have one scene of that Joker and that Batman having an, ex an exchange, just to see what the dynamic would have been like, just for my own curiosity, just to see if they would have had the, uh, the same chemistry as Christian Bale and Heath Ledger. Or Keaton and Nicholson, they had a great chemistry, Keaton and Nicholson. Or Adam West and Cesar Romero, I mean, I love their chemistry. Um, I'd also like to see, I want to see Phoenix's Joker again. But I don't know in what context. I mean, I would love to see him go up against a Batman. I, I, and, and in my dream world, I actually heard this, there was a rumour. Um, I don't know if this is true or not. That the shooting script of the Batman which is coming in 2022, the new Robert Patterson Batman film. Because that film is set in the early 90s and uh, Joker was set in the mid-80s, there's a chance that though that... And so it's a young Batman and it's a middle-aged... There's a chance that those two could meet. And there was a rumour doing the rounds that the uh, shooting script of the Batman, the post credit scene was a figure leaving Arkham Asylum, picking up his belongings, signing out, and then leaving, and then the camera pans down, and he signed his name Arthur Fleck. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I imagine it's not going to happen. I imagine it's not going to happen. Even if, it's, even if it was in the original script, it's not going to be in the finished film, I shouldn't think. But um, Phoenix's Joker would certainly appear to be compatible with that universe that they're building um if that's their take on the riddler have you seen the trailer again another video why am i talking about that i'm wasting content so leto's new joker the new look of the new joker i like the look i like the idea of him being in the asylum if that's what they're doing i like the idea of him and affleck's batman having a scene together again if that's what they're doing the only thing i don't like about it is it's leto's joker and i don't see how without a radical rewrite, um, that character works. Maybe it will, but again, no disrespect to Mr. Leto or his work. I just do not care for that iteration of the character. And there's my, uh, my hot take on that. There you go. Buckles on Batman. It will be a series. There'll be more of these. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Consider becoming a patron. Don't be in a rush. There's not much there yet, but there will be. And uh, I will see you on the next video. Take care, my friends.